Good morning, Cornerstone. My name is William McLaughlin. Uh, my family and I have been attending Cornerstone for about five years. Um, this past year, I got the opportunity to go to California Baptist University in Riverside, California. While there, I lived in the Smith Hall dorm, the best dorm any school has ever seen. <laughs> All right, now let me tell you, my favorite memory living in Smith Hall was the Smith Olympics. Now, the Smith Olympics is a slew of manly events where each hall gets to showcase its strength. Now, that being said, you guys a picture of my hall playing the game Buck Buck, so if I could get the first slide up there. That's Buck Buck, and if you notice, that guy on top, that's our very own Hudson Pate. Um, Buck Buck is a game where you try to stack as many guys on top of each other, and I think our hall ended up getting 15 guys on there. And because of that, we ended up winning not only Buck Buck, but Smith Olympics as a whole. So if I could have the second picture up there, that's our hall after we won. That was just a super fun night. Now, one of the greatest things about Cal Baptist as a whole is the Department of Spiritual Life, or SL. Thanks to SL, I got the opportunity to join a discipleship group, and I wanted to share an analogy I learned regarding being an obedient Christian. So if I get the next slide, this is a wheel. Now, you'll notice that each spoke has a characteristic of Christian living on it. Now, what you will also notice with this wheel is every spoke is the same size. The wheel can't spin if any spokes are smaller, and in the same way, no spoke is more important than another spoke. So keep that in mind as I explain them. Now, in the middle of the wheel is Christ, who is both the reason we follow these morals and the ultimate example of each. What I want to do this morning is show Jesus' example of each of the spokes on the wheel. I will start with the word, which is to read and become familiar with the Bible. A buddy of mine recently shared with me a quote from the late Tim Keller, who said, If Jesus didn't think he could handle life without knowing the scripture inside and out, what makes you think you can? Essentially what he's saying is the Son of God, who was sent by God to save the world, felt it was important to know every part of the scripture, and we should too. Moving on to fellowship, I have learned that fellowship is about spending time with and working together with fellow Christians, to serve others and spread the gospel message. As far as an example from Jesus, I was reading through one of my textbooks last night, and it was talking about the Trinity. I read about how each member of the Trinity worked together throughout the events of the Bible. As I was reading, I was reminded of a Lecrae album called All Things Work Together. The title track of the album is based on Romans 8.28, which says, For those who love God, all things work together for good. In the song, Lecrae expresses how it will all work out, and he expresses his failures as a man within his family and community, and describes how God reminds him of the hope he has in Christ. In the same way that the Trinity works together to provide us with hope, we believers should also work together, as the Lord has blessed us each with spiritual gifts. Gospels. Jesus prayed through difficult decisions, big decisions, when in need and when in pain. Jesus even prayed while on the cross, crying out to God, quoting scripture, and praying for the hearts of those crucifying him. Jesus shows that there is always an opportunity for prayer, and no request is above asking God. In the same way that Jesus prays, thanking God, asking for help, praying on behalf of both his friends and his enemies, we should also pray for such things as we follow Jesus' example. For this final spoke, witnessing, well, witnessing is a spoke that I personally find the hardest, but Jesus made it look easy. I mean, despite constant persecution and religious leaders working to capture him, he continued to share his message. Today, we are blessed to live in America, a country where legally we can't be killed for proclaiming Christ's gospel. And if Jesus was able to share his message with the constant threat and eventual carrying out of his crucifixion, I think we can share the message without that threat. Harkening back to the image of the wheel, each of these aspects working together will allow the wheel to spin. This summer, I am working on being a better witness of Christ's gospel. And I would like to invite you all to join me in working on the spoke that you struggle with the most. To finish off, I will end with a verse that reminds us why we live the way we do. Romans 5, 6 through 8 says, When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for a righteous person, 
But God showed great love by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And with that, I'd like to invite the service to come forward. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and we had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now Skylar's going to come forward to bring the message. <laughs> 